Okay. Now, of course, your uh, your questions are held captive by the tripod. That's fine. I can I can see them. It's the whole idea is yeah, basically as which uh, one? Unformalist body, cultural body. And where do you see your art practice going in the future? Um, I'd like to make more books. Um, I'd like to make uh, some more graphic novels. I'd like to do more uh, just more book work. I really like book work. Um, like book work. Well, what exactly do you mean? Well, I, I like books, and I like my art being in books, whether it's text-based or drawing or somewhere in the middle. Uh, you know, poetry books, uh, art books, artist books, um, whether they're little photocopied editions of 25, that's what I'm doing now. I'm, I leak out these weird little booklets. Um, or proper published books, you know, I enjoy that. Uh, so I do want to do more of that. Mm -hmm. I also want to have a space, uh, or continuing having a space that inspires people. Um, I want to, uh, there's a lot that I want, you know, where I see my art going. I've always been the type that plants various seeds, all kinds of different places, and um, see what, see, I'm just seeing what will catch. You know, and then I nurture that a little bit until something else gets my attention, and then I nurture that, and and on we go. So, um, just this year, uh, there's been a, a first, and the first is that uh, I was invited. I was I was um, one of the subjects of a CBC documentary created by Tali Abacassis. It's called um, Unlikely Treasures, and she interviewed a whole bunch of collectors. And um, I ranted about my attitude towards collecting and collections and how I don't necessarily want to line my coffin with all this stuff. You know, I'm trying to have a realistic attitude about material things and what to do with them. Um, so what happened because of that is that a curator out of Boston, artist curator out of Boston named Rebecca Green, called me up and invited me to participate in an art show that's right now happening in Boston, the Mills Gallery, the Boston Center of the Arts, uh, for the arts. And uh, what it is, what I'm showing is my collections. There's not a drawing there. It's uh, my jars full of avocado seeds, dried ones, my... Uh, my like a jar full of super balls or a jar full of uh, little rusted metal bits of rusted metal um, little bits of plastic uh, scrapbooks um, I have these hanging things little clusters of mementos that I've always that I pick up when I walk down the street and I stuff my pockets full of them and then I take them home and I hang them up and all this kind of things like this you know and so stuff that has always been very personal and very kind of detached from my practice as an image maker, as a picture maker, it's in a gallery show. And I, that was unforeseen. But I wanted, I've always wanted to show these things. I just didn't know how to do it. And I guess circumstance forced me to figure out how to do it. Uh, so that's very exciting. Um, concurrently, I had, I made some new drawings that I hung on, on our walls here at uh, the old little monastery. And that was fun too. And it's kind of like, okay, this is this is what I do. I make these drawings. I also do this other behavior, and uh, it's all the same person that's doing it. They're related. Um, so I guess more of the same is what I see the rest of my art career like. More of the same. Uh, like any artist, one hopes that it steps up to maybe have something to do with money or earning a living. Uh, but I also know that I do have a retail space uh, that is doing better and better since it's been opened up. Um, less is more. Yes, let's go with that. <laughs> yes, yeah, speaking of the retail space, the neighborhood. Okay. Yes, what about the neighborhood? <laughs> um, Myland. Yes. The mythic Myland. Um, the neighborhood is changing. There seems to be a huge demand for sandwiches in the neighborhood. Um, there's also what seems to be a lot more kind of vintage clothing and uh, fashion kind of shops happening. 
side by side with the restaurants. Uh, I love the neighborhood. You know, it's it's you know Saint Viateur, Sesame Street. You just go there and you see everybody. It is a village. It does maybe crave a little anonymity at times because I am I've always been somebody that walks around a lot and makes eye contact with strangers and smiles to people and waves and says hello and all this crap. So there's a lot of that going on. So there are people that I wave to all the time and you know when I go to Toronto for a visit it's fantastic because I don't know anybody and I could mutter to myself down the street. Of course I will bump into somebody that I know, but that's Canada. Canada is the, the small country of Canada um, where every artistic neighborhood is weirdly linked by wormholes and uh, the same people pop up in Halifax or in commercial, on commercial drive in Vancouver or whatever and I bump into them. So, How has the neighborhood affected the store to start with? More people are coming in. Uh, more tourists are coming in. Uh, repeat tourists. Uh, a lot of the people that first got my shop, or our shop now, uh, were tourists. When I hear people coming in saying there's nothing like this in New York, I'm very grateful. You know, when some McGill student comes in and says, where are the other stores like this? You know, I'm like, okay, like, have patience, they're young, etc. But it is a freak shop, and I, I like the fact that it's a freak shop. Um, so the neighborhood has affected it just because, you know, like I think it was three years ago when I heard, first heard the, the term merchandising. <laughs> and, uh, oh yeah, that you're supposed to display things for, so that people want to buy them. Um, which is always a very interesting thing for me because I tend to make things or find things. And the stuff that I tend to buy are secondhand books, uh, my friend's books and records that they put out, and, you know, snacks. I'm not a big consumer of objects, you know, uh, and the things that I most enjoy collecting have zero market value, scraps of wood, um, children's drawings, uh, you know, that kind of thing, an old flyer. Have you seen the neighborhood sort of change your, your art practice? Absolutely, sure. Uh, just because I see things, or I assume certain things that are happening, Let's say, oh, this type of music seems to be happening. Well, I associate this part of my visual work as an analog to that music that's happening now. Uh, let me work on that a little bit more. Now, of course, this is all weird because I don't really hear, I don't listen to the music, and I'm just making these associations. Um, but that's more, you could say, my peers in the neighborhood affect and influence me. Uh, more than the neighborhood itself. I'm, I'm definitely not building, you know, um, homages to, uh, you know, espresso coffee or, uh, you know, $5 sandwiches or something. Because that's what the neighborhood really is. There's the St. Peter coffee hippies that are there forever and they'll always be there. God bless them. How do they make a living? No one knows. Um, and, uh, and there's this kind of new, like, I know what the Myland aesthetic is at this point, And I know who is responsible for it. And there's a handful of people that are responsible for this mile and aesthetic, which is maybe distressed wood and broken bits of porcelain and rusted metal and, uh, and uh, dodgy crafts and stuff like this. Uh, and that's this kind of aesthetic that is now very visible in places like KGB or Casa del Popolo. And... Uh, so yeah, that is that that aesthetic informs me in the way that it allows me to to look at a thing as a decorative object. You know, that's I don't know if it's my more artistic practice or myself as a collector. You know, but it's like anything else, right? If this place was completely empty, I could take a rusted piece of metal and put it on a plinth, and people go, "Oh, ah, they won't ne won't necessarily buy it." But if that piece of rusted metal is uh, in a barrel with another thousand pieces of rusted metal next to the broken glass and the chains and the everything else, nah, it's mm -hmm. not going to work. Uh, you definitely look at it slightly differently. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you? Uh, can we pause for a yeah. moment? Mm -hmm. I just want to see if I have an artist waiting outside.